Hello, this is Steve from Beto's Leatherworks, and today's project is my favorite shoe. This is a pair of uh, Floorsheim Imperials, okay, with the suicide heels. Now, this is my size. I purchased these for my project. I'm going to work on it. I'm going to work on it today for myself. I know I've got a lot to do, but you know what? Sometimes something's stuck in your head. You want to do, you ought to get it done and just, just do it and finish it. And there goes the compressor. I fixed it. I unplugged it. <laughs> anyway, as I was saying, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to rip off this whole leather sole. We're going to take the welt off. We're going to put a, we're going to put a, this right here. This is called a um, split welt because it's split right there. See? And it goes on the shoe just like that. We're going to stitch that on there. We're going to keep it natural color. And then we're going to do a wedge sole. I'll show you guys what I'm talking about once we started. Oh, check this out. You guys can see? My new shirts came in. <laughs> check it out. Isn't that cool? Anyway, these are for sale. They're I'm figuring maybe 20 bucks. You know, so I don't know. We'll see. We'll talk at the end of the video and see what we can come up with. Alright, let's get started. Oh, that's that's one of my old aprons. I made this years ago. I don't use it much anymore. Because the other one's got a phone holder and a pen holder and all that. I use the other one when the shop's open so I can hear the phone when it's ringing. But I just grabbed this one. It's close by. I can't find the other one. It's around here somewhere. It's funny. I always say I'm going to make a special spot to put my apron so I don't forget where it is. And I have about 20 spots. And uh, every time I come in the next day I look for it. Well, sure enough, it's not there. Alright, so... We're not going to save anything from the bottom of the shoe. Nothing. I mean, the heel's going to come off, obviously. I'm going to take the sole off. I'm going to take the welt off. Now, <clears throat> it's not going to be a long video today, guys. I hate to, you know, I hate to tell you that. Once, uh, once I take things apart, I'm going to speed things up a little bit while I'm stitching the welt on because... I mean, it's, it's it's just stitching a welt. There's nothing special about it, you know. I'll show you guys how that goes. And once I do a few of them, we'll just speed it up that way. I'm going to have to sit here for five hours, me, me stitching a welt. There goes the welt. I love taking stuff apart, you know? It's putting them back is the pain in the ass. <laughs> pain in the butt. And she's gone. This is the welt right here, right? This is that piece that's stitched on, so I'm gonna get rid of that. I'm gonna get rid of that shank. We're going to basically um, put a new shank in there. Nice beefier shank. See those two? Old new. I'm gonna put a new fork in there. Once we get a nice base, we'll go ahead and uh, we'll go ahead and put some soles on. All right, let's continue. <clears throat> All right, so once we have the welt off, the soles off, we're going to clean and polish the uppers because since we're going to do a natural welt on the side, you don't want to do black polish after 
you've got the natural color you don't want to get that dirty okay so basically we're just going to take some turpentine and just wipe the shoe down not really not really hard just just wipe it down be gentle with it it's not necessary to strip them all off I mean, as you can see it's pretty dirty I mean if you're gonna if you're going to uh, change the color for example then you can use something harsher maybe like an acetone or something that that's when you can focus on on trying to remove the finish so you can change the color but in this case we're just going to just kind of wipe the surface and uh, and prep it for some conditioners some polishes Now these are notorious for the eyelets getting oxidized. You see, it gets dirty, and then the the metal um, color gets on the tongue area. I got to clean all that up. And believe it or not, don't forget to if you're doing this at home, just kind of just kind of taking care of your shoes. You should always, always. If you're conditioning the uppers, put some conditioners on the inside of the shoes also. Don't forget the inside of the shoes, well, most of the good quality shoes have leather lining. And um, there would it would be nice to get some moisture on that area too, so it doesn't dry out on you. Cool. Look at that. That's dirt. Focus on the creases also here. The creases is where all the old polish, wax buildup happens. And over time, you don't moisturize those cracks. Those creases, I should say, they do tend to crack over time and then you're done. Once they're cracked, you're done. Crack is whack. Say no to crack. <laughs> Who said that? All right, let me see if you guys can guess who said that. I want to tell you at the end of the video who said it. Crack is whack. Say no to crack. Well, I don't know if the person said say no to crack, but I know the person said crack is whack. <laughs> While the person was on crack. <laughs> oh, jeez. Only in America. All right. Ow. That's my toe. Yeah, I felt that through my boots. Cool. All right, let's continue. All right, so this is the storm welt, split welt. A lot of names for these. Okay. So basically, the regular welts are like this, basically, right? They get stitched on. This kind of goes up on the uppers right here. Just like that. Now we skived. See how kind of angled that edge right there. Angle it this way because when the when the other when it goes around the shoe and comes back, we want it to kind of sit on top of each other and should look seamless. It shouldn't look like a clump of leather glued on top of each other. So basically here we're gonna start. This is called a jerk needle. You see that hook at the end? It goes in. Pulls the thread and continue it all the way around. Tighten it. This is a nylon thread we're going to use here. Okay. Nylon wax thread. And we're going to stitch this piece of leather all the way around the shoe. Okay, so I'm going to speed this process up again because because it'll be a while for you know for you guys to watch me to do this. So that way at least I won't miss the details to show you guys. Alright, let's continue. So you guys get the idea how this works, right? 
This is what you call a Goodyear welted construction. This is called the gemming, right? This material fabric. And you've got the footbed. The, main, the gemming goes like this and comes up. The uppers come together and then the welt goes on and it all stitches together. Now, obviously this is being hand stitched. Manufacturers have machines. It's called a Goodyear welt machine where they stitch this on Maybe 10 seconds it takes them to go all the way around the shoe, if that. It's really cool. But repair shops don't have machines like that. And then, plus we don't do production welt replacement. You know, once in a while you'll get it and to replace the welt, but not all the time. So we just do it by hand. getting there all right let's continue so we got it all stitched cool nice contrast between the black and the tan now we get to put the cork in That's Hannah. She's asking if I'm talking to myself. Well, I do talk to myself. But... <clears throat> now, we're going to put this JR sole on here, right? This particular JR sole is a little bit more flexible. So, when everything is said and done, it won't be so heavy for the shoe the flex because this is going to be soft leather it's still JR it's a good uh, durable leather but it's a bit on the soft side I'm going to sand this prep it glue it down stitch it and build up the wedge and then put the outer sole and then we're finished Let's... all right so while the soles dry we're going to cut a small piece of sock lining here Go and emboss it. All right, let's continue. This is what we call debossing. Most people know it as an embossing, but embossing is raised letters. Debossing is pre you know pressed down. See, I missed that the top right there, Beto's, because the paper was not in the proper spot. That's okay. It's for me. No big deal. Cool. Let's continue. What time is it? I can't do it. Oh, man. I got to take this shit off. Ah, it's hammer time. Did you guys notice that that's the hammer? Isn't that cool? Even the corners notched out there. See the same? 
Uh, it is hammer time. Hannah, what time is it? Is it hammer time? That's, well, you can't say it. Is it hammer time? <laughs> Come on now. It's hammer time. We laugh a little bit here today. All right, so let's get this on here. This is a pretty big, uh, pretty wide shoe. We can't have hammer time without any compressor noise. Now we get to see the little gaps right there between the welt and the sole. We get to hammer that down too. Now, this isn't going to be the finished shape, you see, because this welt is pretty wide. So, so what I'm going to do is basically after trimming it with a knife, I'm going to sand it, give it some, uh, give it a narrower shape. Okay. Cool. All right, let's continue. So this is a Landis outsole stitcher. Basically, it's going to stitch the welt and the sole together. the thread which is not good why did it break the thread it never breaks the thread oh yeah it's on video recording that's why now the trick is going to be I had a phone call that came in now I was saying the trick is going to be where it stopped to you know to continue without being able to be noticed from the top because on a light color on a light color welt with white stitches there's no really hiding anything you can't hide the flaws so we're going to try this see if it works all right Not too bad. I think once it gets hammered down, it'll be okay. Thank God. It's right at the toe. You can't hide it. Anyway, as you see, it turned out pretty good, actually. Cool, huh? I like it. Let's continue. All right, so this is one of one pieces for the wedge, right? It's going to come about where 
it's sloping right there in the arch. Glue that down. We'll trim it. We'll put another one on there. Okay. And that'll give us the proper height of the heel. And then we're going to put a sole on. Now, so I've got three colors here. Red, camouflage, and black. So I thought about this and, and this is kind of limited to what you can wear it with. So we'll get rid of that. Now, I'm kind of stuck on these two colors. I don't know which one to do. So, okay. Tails, black, heads, red. Okay. <laughs> it's tails. So black as it is. One way to make a decision. I mean, you know, black would be good. I guess I could put some kind of a, like a thin midsole before I put this on. Like a different color midsole. One of my friends suggested red. Well, if it's going to be, if it's going to be red sole, red midsole is not going to look good. So black, the red midsole. I don't think I have any red. Got green, orange, blue, beige, black, white, no red. So we're going to skip that. Now, I skived the, this end right here. See how it thinned out? Because I've got to sand that down. So it's, it's a skiving machine that, that takes that edge off there. So after all that deciding <clears throat> which sole we're going to use, turns out that the black one's too small. It's too short. So I heated it up. It is hot. We're going to see if we can stretch it on here. Make it fit. Oh, by the way, this is the Vibram Ripple sole, mini Ripple. They make a bigger one than this. Really heavy, aggressive looking. Well, I think they used to. I don't think they make it anymore. Cool, we're almost there. I'm gonna sand, put cream on there, condition. A little bit of wax here and there, and we shall be ready to go. All right, let's continue. All right, welcome back. We are done with the Floorsheim Hybrid. This is called the Floor. We're going to call it. I'm going to call it the Floorsheim Hybrid. Okay. I like it. I'm going to wear it tomorrow. Tomorrow's Thanksgiving. Can't see the inside, but it's there. 
There you go. Oh, you saw it earlier. I should have used the heel pad. I think they turned out pretty cool. Floor shine hybrid. I like it. Oh, by the way, thank you very much for yesterday's uh, upload where you guys, you know, a lot of comments about uh, my friend passing away last week or the week before. Um, and I really appreciate it. Um, I think the dog helped me out a lot, you know, kind of kind of hung around. He shows forever love, you know. The love of a dog never goes away. Um, okay, so welcome to comment, share, subscribe, and um, we'll see you guys on the next. Oh, wait, the shirts. Okay, what are we going to do with the shirts? Um, so I figured, let's say 20 bucks right each. So you guys want to email me, maybe give me your address, and you can PayPal, Venmo, you know? Okay, so let's do this. This is going to be a little bit difficult, but I think I can do it, right? I have 80 or so shirts, different sizes, uh, medium, large, extra large, and double XL. That's all I've got, okay? For now, I mean, we're going to give it a try and see, see what happens. And I think the shipping into the U.S. post office may be about four bucks in like an envelope, like a like a plastic envelope, something like that, padded envelope, something like that. So give or take a dollar or two, okay? Overseas shipping, I don't know, guys. It's, you know, if you really want it, I'll find out how much it would cost and we can figure something out. All right. Well, once again, thank you again for hanging out and uh, watching one of my projects this time. This is my personal project, my favorite shoe. All right, we'll see you guys again. Take care.